It is always recommended to disconnect the power to your cabinet before any service or preventive maintenance is done. To clean the interior of the cabinet, remove the product, epoxy coated shelves, and clips and set them to the side. Using a baking soda and warm water solution, take a cloth and wipe down all surfaces as well as the shelves you remove making sure to rinse them thoroughly with clean water and be sure the cabinet interior and shelves are dry before reinstalling the shelves and clips. Never use harsh chemicals or detergents as this could discolor or damage the surfaces of the cabinet. Before installing the shelves you should check and clean the evaporator drain pan. If the drain pan appears to be full of water that is an indication that the half inch drain hole is blocked and should be cleared. This could be cleared with either a straw or something similar by pushing through the half inch hole until the water actually drains or the obstruction is removed. Using a Phillips screwdriver, check and tighten the door handle and hinge screws and check to be sure the hinges are working properly and that the door closes by themselves. The door gasket seal is very important. If the gasket is not sealing properly, it will cause excessive condensation as well as air leaks and temperature issues. It's good to clean and inspect the door gaskets often and you can use a warm soapy solution and a cloth or soft bristle brush making sure that you dry all surfaces after cleaning. At this time, inspect the door gasket for any tears or damage and if replacements are needed, contact the factory with the cabinet model and serial number which can be found on the inside wall of the cabinet. Replacing the gasket requires no tools and gently pull the gasket dart out of the retainer starting with the top corner and to reinstall the new door gasket push the dart into the retainer with your thumb and fingers pull lightly on the gasket to be sure the dart is set correctly into the retainer. The air clearance on a standard unit without a front breather requires a minimum of three inches on the sides and rear. If the minimum three inch clearance on the sides and rears is not available the front breathing option would be the way to go. This is easily installed. You can consult the operation manual for this installation and this requires minimal clearances on the sides and rear. The case can be pushed up against the wall and it draws air in from the front left, goes through the condensing unit and discharges out the front right. All sandwich units with an open top come with plastic condiment pans and pan dividers and it is very important that the pans are left in the opening at all times with or without product. It is also important that the flip or flat lids be placed over the pan area at slower times so that the cabinet temperature can recover. If the pan opening is left without or missing some pans, this will cause the temperature and condensation issues as well as cause the evaporator coil to freeze. The airflow on the under counter and sandwich cases draws air in at the bottom, traveling up through the evaporator and is discharged out the front and top louvers. It is very important when loading product into the cabinet that these areas are not blocked as this will cause temperature issues as well as cause the evaporator coil to freeze. The electronic control on the front of the cabinet takes the place of the thermostat, the thermometer, and the defrost timer. It is very important that the control and the circuit board that's located on the back exterior of the cabinet never have anything sprayed or spilled on them as with all electrical components this will cause failure and may affect the warranty. Using a Phillips screwdriver remove the mounting screws at the bottom of the rear cover and remove the rear cover and set it to the side. Take a soft bristle brush and clean the air cool condenser coil in a downward motion and you can also use a shop vac or compressed air if desired. In some severe and greasy conditions a chemical degreaser may be needed but you must be careful to place something under the cabinet to catch the liquid and be sure to flush the condenser coil and areas with clean water to remove any excess chemical cleaner. It is also important if anything is sprayed into the condenser area nothing comes in contact with any electrical components. It is important the condenser coil be checked for any paper or dirt before calling for warranty service as preventive maintenance is not considered a warranty covered item. Never install a condenser filter on the condenser coil as this will hinder airflow and may affect your warranty. At this time your case may have a wick pad which helps with the removal of the condensation output. To clean the wick pad remove the mounting screw 
and remove the wick pad and clean with water in the sink. And at the same time, before reinstalling the wick, inspect the drain pan for any debris or dirt, as well as the drain hose. After the wick pad has been cleaned, reinstall into the drain pan, install the mounting clip, and check to make sure that everything is secure. After the condenser coil and drain pan areas have been addressed and before reinstalling the exterior rear cover, inspect all components to be sure that they are secured properly and that nothing is obstructing the condenser blade such as the power cord. After this is done and completed, reinstall the rear back cover. It is also good to inspect the stem casters or legs to be sure that they are tight and flush with the bottom of the case as they may loosen when moving the case from one location to the other and tighten if needed so that no portion of the stem is visible. Restore power to the cabinet and I hope this video was helpful and if additional information is needed consult the factory or the operation manuals which can be downloaded from the website www.continentalrefrigerator.com.